what's going on today guys i just picked up the brand new 2018 ducati multistrada super enduro courtesy of the good folks up at winchester ducati this thing is so new i don't know if you guys can see it it has two miles on it we gotta rack some miles up on this thing and have some fun All right, I got a chance to ride the bike a little bit last night. I'm gonna start this video off like I do all my review videos going over the specs of the bike. Then we're gonna head back to my garage, check out some of the features and some of the things that make it different than the regular Multistrada as well as the Multistrada Enduro. We're gonna start out with the engine. The engine is a liquid-cooled L-Twin uh, 1198 cc. This is the same engine used in the 2017 and previous Multistradas. This is not the new uh, 1260 engine that's coming out for 2018 for the other Multistrada lineup. This engine is putting out 152 horsepower, 94 foot-pounds of torque, so there is plenty of power. There are also four different ride modes, which I'll go into a little bit more detail when we get back to the garage, but you do have four different ride mode you can choose from you do have a six-speed gearbox and it is chain drive as every ducati is when it comes to suspension we've got an upside down front fork uh, we've got sock suspension on it it is electronically adjustable and that is actually done through the ride modes and i'll get into that in a little more detail later you also have a non-adjustable steering damper on the front wheels and brakes you've got a 19 inch front wheel and a 17 inch rear wheel that does set it apart from the other Multistradas with the exception of the Enduro model and they are outfitted with Pirelli I believe these are Rally Sport tires I'll, I'll put it up on the screen in case I'm wrong it's a fairly aggressive off-road tread pattern but they still are DOT legal and they're not quite a full knobby you've got twin disc 320 millimeter Brembo uh, disc up front and you have a single disc in the back they both have ABS and this bike is also equipped with cornering ABS just a few other things I want to touch on when it comes to the specs. You do have a 7.9 gallon fuel tank. You have a 34.3 inch reach to the ground. This is a really high seat on this bike. So if you're short, you might have some problems getting on and off this thing. And it's also weighing in at 511 pounds. I believe that is the drive weight though. So it's gonna be a little bit heavier once you get the fluids on the bike. So now that we've touched on some of the specs, let's head back to the garage so I can show you some of the features. All right, guys, we're back here in my garage so I can show you some of the features on the Enduro Pro. Uh, I want to start with what makes this bike different than the regular Enduro. Most of the differences on this bike can be seen from the outside. For instance, this sand colored paint is only available in the Enduro Pro, as is the two-tone seat. But here's something cool about this paint. Just looking at it in pictures, you can't tell. Maybe you guys can hear it there with my hand. But what that is, is it's almost like a rhino liner type finish on this paint. And the reason why they did this is if it does, you know, it's an Enduro bike. So if you drop it, it's not going to scuff as easy and it ought to hold up really well over time. This is something I knocked on the original Enduro because it didn't have crash bars, though it did have a really nice bash plate. They did put the crash bars on the Enduro Pro and I'm happy they did. Also mounted on the crash bars are auxiliary lights. These lights are pretty cool. I haven't had a chance to test them out at night yet, but for daytime, it definitely helps with the visibility of people being able to see you. Another difference on the bike is all of this stuff here painted black. It is not painted black on the other Enduro model, and I don't believe it is on the other Multistratas, though I'll have to look. And right back here, we have the Terram Yoni titanium exhaust that also does not come on the regular Enduro. And then one of the final differences is this windshield right here. It's actually much shorter than the ones that come on the other Multistratas and also on the Enduro. It's made short because you're supposed to be riding this bike off-road, so in theory, you won't need as much wind protection. Another thing that makes the Multistrata Enduro Pro different than the regular Enduro are these tires. They are a much more aggressive off-road pattern than the standard Enduro comes with. Now I'm gonna show you a few things that make the Enduro, be it the Pro model or the regular model, different than the regular Multistrata. You see here on the swing arm, you have one side, two sides. The other Enduro models come with a single-sided swing arm. This one for rigidity comes with a dual-sided swing arm. Another thing that makes the Enduro models different than the regular Multistrata is this is a 19 inch front wheel versus a 17 inch. And if you look right here, I mean, obviously you can tell it's a spoked rim, but if you look here, you can see that the spokes are on the outside. And the reason why they do this is because this is a tubeless tire setup. This is very similar to what BMW does. That way 
These are running out, so you don't have to worry about putting some sort of inner tube or, uh, or even some sort of rubber gasket in there to keep air from leaking out of the tire. Now, in keeping with the off-road theme, we do have an oversized foot peg on here. Now, you will notice the rubber insert. That is to help alleviate vibration at a little bit higher speeds. But these pop out if you want a little bit more grip for off-road riding for uh, these hefty teeth to uh, bite into your boot. I'm happy to see Ducati included this folding shift lever. That way, in case of a tip-over, you don't have to worry about breaking it. Another cool feature on this bike is this adjustable brake pedal that gives you two different heights. Another thing I like that Ducati did on this bike is see how these foot pegs, this is for the passenger, they tuck up inside here so they're kind of protected. So, you know, if you were to have a tip over, these should be okay and, and uh, not cause any problems. When I posted the picture of the bike on uh, Instagram and Facebook last night, I had some people ask, is this a real skid plate? That's not plastic, that's aluminum. And to make things even better, it is not attached to the engine, it's actually attached to the frame, providing you maximum protection. Let's come up here to the cockpit area, you'll notice there's no key, and that is because this bike runs off a of fob, which I have in my pocket. Just turn this. Now this TFT display is the same one they've been running for the last few years. I've seen the uh, 1260 displays, they're a little bit different, but for the Enduro Pro, they're gonna keep with this one. Uh, some things I like about it, right now you can kind of tell it's in night mode. Um, it, it will change to white or, uh, or a brighter color when you're out in the daylight. I do like the really big gear indicator on there. I mean, if you can't see what gear you're in, then you probably shouldn't be riding. And also there's all sorts of information on here. Now, when I first rode one of these about a year and a half ago, it was kind of information overload, but you do get used to it pretty quickly. You can see I've got the trip odometer. Um, if, I'm, if you look right here, I can toggle through there. And then I've got the uh, air temperature outside down at the bottom and I can pull up my miles per gallon and average speed and things of that nature. Another thing that's cool on this bike, you notice these are backlit and they are backlit at night to make it a little bit easier to uh, find your controls. It's that way on both the left side of the handlebar and over here on the right hand side of the handlebar. Now I mentioned earlier, there are, diff there are four different modes on this bike. You can see I currently have it in sport mode. There's also a touring mode, an urban mode, and an enduro mode. And if you're checking it out, they all have different settings for ABS, traction control, wheelie control. Um, it just popped off there because I didn't pick one. Um, preload on the suspension, a lot of different settings. These can be further tuned, but these are your default settings on it. And if you want to choose one, you just pick it, hold in on it. And you guys probably can't hear it right now, but I can actually hear the suspension readjusting itself for the new uh, preload. You guys probably saw it over here earlier. You do have uh, cruise control on the bike. You also have the ability to turn these auxiliary lights off and on, and it will tell you here on the screen. You can see that's on, that's off on off and you can you can see them kick on there now the Maltestrada does have led headlights another cool thing about these lights they do have cornering lights sort of like my super adventure does but they're actually built into the headlight up here and not down low uh, i haven't had it out at night yet so i haven't had a chance to test it you also have the turn signal in the hand guard now this is something i knocked the regular enduro on i'm going to knock this one on it too we've got crash bars we've got a bash plate we've got you know a what's supposed to be a true off-road motorcycle and we got plastic hand guards on here so this is something i'd like to see them beef up i'm sure this is available in the accessory catalog but it would be nice to have an aluminum uh, crash bar through here or aluminum hand guard through here instead of this plastic one one thing i didn't mention right away but gets me really excited center stand i believe a center stand is necessary for any sort of touring bike sport touring bike that has a chain. Uh, it's nice to have even if you don't have a chain because if you do need to uh, fix a tire or something like that, you've got a way to get it up off of the uh, side stand so you can actually balance it and do some work to it. Now while you don't need the key to turn on the bike, you do need it to open your fuel cap. I have seen some other manufacturers now just doing a push button working the same way that it does with this where this just has to be within proximity. Ducati still needs a key. With the passenger seat removed, we can see we have a tool kit in here from Ducati. We also have a bunch of different tumblers um, should you decide to outfit your bike with the uh, optional saddlebags and top case. The first thing I pulled out of the tool kit is the tubeless tire repair kit. It's nice of them to include this in here. This one runs off uh, CO2, so not only can you plug your tire, you can also pump it back up. However, the rest of the tool kit is pretty spartan. We have a, a screwdriver, a wrench, a couple Allens, a fuse puller, um, a socket, and uh, 
That's about it. Not much else in the toolkit. Wanted to get the bike out at night so you could see how these lights do. Before we talk about the lights, let's just take a look at the gauge cluster down here. You can see it was like it was in the garage. I call that kind of night mode. That's when it's black instead of a white background. And also you can see the buttons backlit on each side of the handlebars. Right now, the light is just on low beam and I do not have the auxiliary lights on. Now we're gonna kick the headlight up to high beam. You can see there's a definite difference there. I'm gonna take it back to low. And now I'm gonna turn on the auxiliary lights and wow, does that light stuff up. There we go, those are the auxiliary lights and the uh, high beams on all at the same time. Once I get the opportunity and we get on some side roads here, we're gonna see how the cornering lights work as well. We're gonna kick off the auxiliary lights. Oh yeah, I do see, if you look over to the right, see the cornering light kick on. I think they also work when the auxiliary lights are on, it's just difficult to tell. I really like those auxiliary lights though. See if we see it when we land it over here to the left. Yeah, you can see it light up. As you can see, the cornering lights do what they're supposed to. I still think they're a little more novelty than necessity. But with the auxiliary lights on here, this easily makes this the best lighting setup I've ever ridden on a bike straight from the manufacturer. All right, guys, now that I've had this 2018 Multistrada Enduro Pro and I've been able to live with it the last few days, and put a couple hundred miles on it it's time for me to share with you my thoughts we're going to start with the engine i mean the, the thing's a monster it puts down 152 horsepower one thing i really really like about it is its fuel delivery it doesn't matter what ride mode you're in the fuel delivery is both smooth and predictable this is especially true uh, in enduro mode where you really need it to be smooth because the last thing you want is unpredictable fuel injection when you're riding a 500 pound motorcycle off-road you need it to be smooth it's very smooth in enduro mode it's great in touring mode and it's exceptionally good in sport mode the other great thing about this engine is it makes so much torque you can pretty much just ride around in fifth gear on back roads and it, you know you, you don't really have to shift if you want to be lazy it's going to pull you out of just about any corner you've slowed down for speaking of cornering this does have a semi-active suspension on it and it does a great job of leveling out the chassis when you go to brake and you get back on the throttle on the apex i mean it keeps the chassis nice and level i wish i had the skills to do that but fortunately the computer does it for me now and it uh it definitely makes the riding experience a lot of fun and it gives you a lot of confidence entering into the corner and and exiting the corner it does exceptionally well for a bike that has a big, you know, like 60-40 off-road tire on it. Now, when you get that tire out to the outer edge, you can feel it's not quite as stable as a true street tire. But I never lost confidence in the tire. It's still stuck really well. And, you know, I'm out riding right now. It's only like 40 degrees outside. So it's not like I got a lot of heat in the tire or that there's a lot of heat in the asphalt we're riding. In fact, some of it's wet, and I still have full confidence in it. When it comes to the brakes, the brakes do a great job of actually bringing it to a stop, but also slowing it down for corners. They're very linear. Uh, you don't have like a hard initial bite or anything, and then they go away. They're just linear. You know exactly uh, how they're going to slow you down each time. There's, there's no surprises. You also do have ABS and cornering ABS, and I did not find those to be intrusive at all, but it does. Uh, it is nice to know that that's there to save your bacon if need be. Speaking of the different ride modes and, and suspension settings, there is a big difference between like touring mode and, and sport mode and not just when it comes to the fuel mapping when it comes to the suspension settings i was riding down a you know kind of a beat up back road and i kicked it over into touring mode out of sport mode sport mode was kind of beating me up with the suspension because it was much much harder it did smooth things out switching it over to touring mode i was able to keep going across that road at a much higher speed and it soaked up the bumps and wasn't beating me to death any longer so it's good to know that the suspension settings you know there actually is a noticeable difference when it comes to the ergos on the bike they're very very comfortable you can ride this bike all day long uh, my only thing about it is it's a little bit different than some other bikes i've ridden uh, because the way you're seated down in this bike even though you are still 34 and a third inch seat height uh, you kind of feel like you're sitting in a saddle a little bit more than you feel like you're sitting on a motorcycle seat I'm not saying that's a bad thing it's just different so Ducatis have never been the cheapest bikes to own. They're a quality machine. You're paying a premium price for them. You're also usually paying more to maintain them, but that's not necessarily the case with this bike. The maintenance intervals are 15,000 kilometers or a little over 9,000 miles with the valve adjustment intervals 
coming at 30,000 kilometers or a little over 18,000 miles. So you're not going to have this bike in the shop a lot and it really shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg to keep it maintained properly. Because this is an enduro, I know you're going to want to know how it did off-road. The good news is I did take it off pavement. The bad news is it was just down a dirt road. Most of our trails in the area are still closed for winter and won't be open for a few more months. And it's a dealer demo and I've got to bring this thing back in one piece so I just took it easy. I did go down the back side of the mountain on, on a nice dirt road. Um, it was a little muddy in some sections. Bike did really well, second and third gear. Tires hooked up great. Uh, enduro mode was really, really smooth like I was talking about earlier. Had full confidence in the bike the entire time. For a 500 and some pound machine, it did, it did fine off-road. Uh, the only time you're really going to notice the theft is at real, real low speed stuff or if you get caught in the middle of a single track and you got to turn the damn thing around. I would have liked to have taken it off-road a little more, but for the limited amount I got, the bike did fine. I'm sure it's no real surprise that overall I really like this bike. It's a total performance package. It does everything it's advertised to do and it does it really well. But there are some things, you know, aside from the performance that I like about the bike. First thing is the look. I think this paint scheme on it is really cool. I like the fact that it's made out of like that Rhino liner type material. I'd like to see some other bikes come out that way. To, to me, it's neat. Other people may not like it, but if you're going to be riding something off-road, it should help it from keeping getting scuffed up. And overall, I just think it looks pretty neat. I also like the fact that Ducati included the, the, the crash bars. That was one of my critiques on the last Enduro bike. It, it's got overall great protection on it. I love the lighting system like we talked about having it out the other night. This to me is what the original Enduro model should have been. And if this would have been the original Enduro model, I would have liked that bike so much better. Now, no bike is perfect. So let me touch on some of the things I don't like about this bike. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is this windshield. This thing is absolutely useless. It provides almost no wind protection whatsoever. I'm sure we can get another one to bolt on here, but seriously, Ducati, this is more like a bug screen than anything. So another thing I don't like on this bike are the hand guards. It's something I didn't like about the last Enduro. One, they're plastic. Two, they have the turn signals in there. So if you were to actually bash these things up going through the woods or on a trail, you're no longer gonna have front turn signals. Another thing that's just kind of a minor annoyance, if you guys look over here where my left index finger is, that's the high low beam switch. There was at least a dozen times over the course of the last couple of days that I have inadvertently bumped that switch, putting it into high beam without me even knowing it. Um, maybe they could have just had that switch out just a little bit further. Uh, maybe some of you won't be an issue for it, but for me, I, I kept high beaming people. Another thing, and I don't know if this is a negative or not, this bike does have a key fob, yet you still need the actual key in order to unlock the passenger seat or in order to get to the fuel tank. I'm just kind of indifferent about it. I don't really know what advantage it provides. I just feel like being that it's battery powered, that's one more thing that could possibly go wrong if the batteries were to fail. So I don't know if it's a negative, but it's definitely uh, not a positive. And I guess the last thing I don't like about the bike is the fact that it's still the 1198cc engine. I have no issue with this engine, but if all the other Multistrada models for 2018 are going to the 1260, it really would have been nice to see what the 1260 would have done in this package. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the 2018 Ducati Multistrada Enduro Pro, but you don't have to take my word for it, and that's why I suggest you go test ride one for yourself. In fact, if you'd like to test ride this exact machine, it will be available up at Ducati Winchester for demo and test rides. That is, as soon as I decide to take it back. Speaking of Ducati Winchester, big thank you to those guys for loaning me out this bike. I really appreciate it, and we've got a lot more 2018 Ducati reviews coming up on the channel very, very soon. So in closing, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button. We'd love to have you. If you've got any questions I didn't answer about this bike, or you'd just like some clarification, let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.